Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is April the 11th. And uh, this is our time where we gather for some reflection time. We read some scripture together. We spend some time in prayer with the scripture. And then uh, we, we read some, uh, some writings based on John Wesley's sermons. And if you happen to be joining us live or throughout the day, like Martha Jones is this morning, I invite you to uh, drop us a line there in the comment box. It's also a great place to uh, put your prayer concerns and your praises, those places where you've seen God active in your life. Well, today is Thursday, so this will be the last day that we get together this week. And I uh, just wanted to give you guys a reminder that this Saturday here at Beaver Dam, the youth are having a car wash, bake sale, yard sale fundraiser for their mission trip. So I uh, hope that you can come by and support the youth in their efforts. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, it's always good to, to throw some soap on cars kind of thing. So um, let's go ahead and delve into our text, shall we? Um, our text for this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're delving into, uh, we're taking a look at verses 13 through 23. So uh, let's see what we've got here. I see my mom's joining us. Good morning, mom. Glad to see you're, you're up and joining us this morning. So this is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 23, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. And this little section is entitled, response of obedience so let's hear these words from peter therefore once you have changed once let me start over again therefore once you're you have your minds ready for action and you are thinking clearly place your hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when jesus christ is revealed don't be conformed to your former desires, those that shaped you when you were ignorant. But as obedient children, you must be holy in every aspect of your lives, just as the one who called you is holy. It is written, you will be holy because I am holy. Since you call upon the Father who judges all people, according to their actions without favoritism you should conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your dwelling in a strange land live in this way knowing that you are not liberated by perishable things like silver or gold from the empty lifestyle you inherited from your ancestors instead you were liberated by the precious blood of Christ, like that of a flawless, spotless lamb. Christ was chosen before creation of the world, but was only revealed at the end of time. This was done for you, who through Christ are faithful to God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. So now, your faith and hope should rest in God. As you set yourselves apart by your obedience to the truth so that you might have genuine affection for your fellow believers, love each other deeply and earnestly. Do this because you have been given new birth, not from the type of seed that decays, but from the seed that doesn't. This seed is God's life-giving and enduring word. That's some pretty good stuff right there. Wow. Oh, so uh, that is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So our focus verse this morning uh, is verse 20, and we're gonna we're gonna hear it from different translations stopping for a moment to let the scriptures speak to us so uh let's let's come to the lord in prayer this morning let's kind of settle into our seats let's take a deep breath or two let's try to 
gather our scattered senses. Let's put away our to-do list for the day so that we can focus on the presence of God. First Peter chapter 1 verse 20 from the King James Version. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. From the New Revised Standard Version. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. In the common English translation, Christ was chosen before the creation of the world, but was only revealed at the end time. This was done for you. From the New Living Translation, God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he's been revealed for your sake. And from the message translation, this was no afterthought, even though it is only lately at the end of ages become public knowledge, 
God always knew he was going to do this for you. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use our daily devotional insight book entitled Renew My Heart. And the one for today uh, is entitled Overturning Satan's Works. So let's see what Wesley has to say about this verse 20. Just as Satan began his first work in Eve by tainting her with unbelief, so the Son of God begins his work in us by enabling us to believe in him. He both opens and enlightens our understanding. He commands light to shine out of darkness and takes away the veil which the God of this world has spread over our hearts. Then we see not only by a chain of reasoning, but by a kind of intuition, by the direct view that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing to me my former trespasses, enabling me to receive forgiveness of sins. The peace with God which, flow, which follows particularly diverts us from the fear of death. At the same time, the Son of God strikes at the root of the grand work of the devil, pride. The sinner humbles himself before the Lord as it were in dust and ashes. Christ strikes at the root of self-will. The humbled sinner is enabled to say, not I will, not as I will, but as you will. The Son of God destroys the love of the world the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, and the pride of life, and saves us from see seeking or, experiencing or expecting to find happiness in any creature. As Satan turned the heart of mankind from the creator to the creature, so the Son of God destroys the works of the devil by turning man, men's and women's hearts back again from the creature to the creator. Some uh, pretty good writings from Wesley this morning. Um, really laying out um, a life of holiness. So um, as I was preparing this morning, I went to my Wesley study Bible and it had some really good notes in here for this week, uh, for this particular passage. And I thought I would share those with you. Uh, this is for verses uh, 13, starting with verse 13. God's children must focus their hope on the grace of Christ, which also suggests, as Wesley notes, the blessings which are even now brought to you by the revelation of Christ in you. Just as God is holy, unlike all would-be gods, so God's people will live as no others live. Therefore, to be holy is to obey God's word out of deep respect for God's wishes, rather than compulsion, and to love others, especially God's dear children. Jesus' death is a liberating ransom, sets us free to obey. To obey. Likewise, the power of God's word that gives us new life also cleanses us eternally and enables us to live sincere in love, enables us to love sincerely. Since God has fathered us precisely to live under his direction, 
love others, and to become full, fully grown, we must resist the many customs and fashions of the culture and reject anything incompatible with love. I thought those were some pretty good notes um, of kind of outlining uh, some of some of what the expectation is. And also in this in this particular section of First Peter, we also have one of our Wesleyan core terms, the holiness of life. And I thought this was worthwhile sharing as as well this morning because it kind of ties in to our topic of um, Christ freeing us and and overcoming the evils of the world and allowing us to focus on things of God. So uh, listen to these words about the holiness of life. John Wesley's common phrase, inward and outward holiness, emphasizes the essential link between heart holiness and holy living. Referring to 1 Peter 15, John Wesley writes, Perfection is another name for universal holiness, inward and outward righteousness, holiness of life aspiring from holiness of heart. God works in the Christian to produce both inward and outward holiness. The Holy Spirit strengthens our will so to produce every good desire, whether relating to our tempers, words, or actions, to inward or outward holiness. 1 Peter 15 instructs us, you must be holy in every aspect of your lives, just as the one who called you is holy. No dimension of life, from attitudes and sexuality to our use of money and care for the earth, falls outside the scope of holy living. We are to have the attitude of Christ, living as Jesus lived. And you know, that really is the, the real, for me, the real root of holiness, is to have the attitude of Christ, and living as Jesus lived because that really speaks to the inward and outward part of holiness that John Wesley was talking about that holiness being as as close to Christ like as we can we can become it's reaching for that perfection that uh, that we speak of in in the movement of grace where our inward and outward actions are as close to God as we can possibly be. And in order for us to do that, in order for us to, to allow God to work through us in that fashion, God does have to destroy evil. And God does have to help us to turn from um, the evil ways of the world, shall we say, shall we we could say, or uh, if you want to use the if you want to use the image of Satan, of uh, knocking Satan down a few pegs. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of what I was thinking about this morning as as I was pondering what this holiness means and what it means for us to be holy and to to live uh, a holy life and to live fully into this holiness that uh, that God desires for us, that God has always desired for us, and that God has provided, a, provided us a way to live into through the death of Christ. So uh, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. So if you have any thoughts on this particular topic, I invite you to, to drop them there in the comment box. It's, uh, it's a great way that we can we can keep the conversation going. So this is Thursday, so this is our, our last day to get together this week. Uh, I hope to see you either Saturday at the youth fundraiser event or uh, perhaps at worship either at 8 o'clock here on Facebook or 9.30 at Rousey's or uh, 11 o'clock here at Beaverdam. Uh, I hope you get the opportunity to, I hope you take the opportunity and make the opportunity to worship God sometime during this upcoming weekend. Um, but for now, um, let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we come to you oh, seeking an inward and outward change in our lives. 
God, we know it's a journey. We know it's a, a progression towards that perfection that you call us to live. And God, we are just truly thankful that uh, you are here to walk with us through it, that you give us the strength and the courage and um, the perseverance to continue to want to grow closer to you. God, we thank you for the love that you pour out upon us each and every day. We thank you for all of the ways that we see your presence and your activity in our lives. And God, we ask this morning that you be with those who, uh, who need a little bit of extra care this morning, those who might be facing surgery this morning, those who might be uh, struggling with some financial troubles or maybe troubles at work, or maybe just health issues or Maybe they're just feeling kind of blah because it's supposed to rain this afternoon. Lord, we just, uh, we know that when we come to you seeking your guidance and seeking your love, that it's there. We just need to be able to, to see all of the ways that you are active in our lives. So God, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds and our souls to you so that we can grow closer to you each and every day. God, we lay this prayer at your feet in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, friends, I uh, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.